Hey guys, what's going on? It's me, Yassine, and today we are in my garage, and that's because a few weeks ago, I bought a Tesla Model 3, and I named her Friday. So I did a video about my initial impressions, so if you wanna see that video, then I'll leave that down below in the description. But today I wanted to go over my charging solution, because you know when you buy an electric car, you're gonna have to charge it. It's uh, right there behind me but I just wanted to go through everything that you're gonna need. And this build was actually inspired by um, I One Tesla. He has a YouTube channel where he makes a bunch of videos about Teslas. And I'll leave a link in the description for that video that this video was inspired by. Definitely go check out his channel. But here's what you're gonna need. So you're gonna need a 50 amp uh, breaker for your breaker box, whether it's in your garage or whether it's um, in your basement. And then after that, you're gonna need a six gauge wire. And that's actually the most important, I mean, actually the most expensive part, because depending on how long you need to run it from your basement or from your garage, then that's what's gonna cost the most for you. And then after that, you're gonna need a NEMA 1450 wall outlet to connect that wire to, and then a two by four, and they're about eight feet, and you need two of those, and you'll be cutting them around to build that box. And then after that, you're gonna need the cover, which is three quarter inch ply board, and it was two feet by four feet. And then after that, just decals and stickers, which is stuff that I had laying around, but I'll also leave a link in the description where you can buy those stuff. So if you want to, you know, have a white paint or you can paint it yourself or the Tesla logo. Anyway, that's my setup and honestly it works pretty good and it cost me less than 200 bucks. The most expensive part was the six gauge wire and that's just depends on how long you want it to be. I had to run mine all the way from the basement and then poke a hole and run it into the garage. But I'm gonna show you guys um, everything that I had to do. So if you like this video, then definitely give it a thumbs up. Everything that I'm gonna talk about in the video, I'll leave it down below in the description. And if you guys have a question throughout this whole video, then definitely leave me a comment in the comment section right below that like button, and I'll do my best answering that. So right now I'm gonna flip the camera around, show you guys this setup, and then real quick at the end, show you the um, 50 amp breaker that's downstairs in my basement. So this is my setup right here, and Right there at the bottom, you'll see the 12 gauge wire that's coming from the left side of my garage and it's coming from a hole, which I'm gonna show you guys later. And then you have the setup right here. So let's get real close and then I'll show you what that consists of. So when I open this up, you'll be able to see that the 12 gauge wire comes in from the side, goes up to the middle, and then it actually connects to a NEMA 1450 outlet. And if I take the charger out, that's just a regular outlet, one of those big outlets that you connect your dryer to. So that's what it looks like. And if I didn't have this whole setup all around it, then you would just have that outlet and you can essentially plug your uh, mobile charger into that and you'd be good to go. But I didn't want that just sticking up like right there all the way here. So what I decided to do is build this frame around it. So I started out by building this little shelf right here and this one holds the big part of the charger, I guess. And then I plug this into the wall and when I mounted this and set it up, it ended up being upside down, but it's all covered so it doesn't really matter. And then I have this sitting here and it's all lit up showing that it's, you know, everything is wired correct and everything is working. So what I did is I took two by four, which is this right here, and I cut it to two lengths, which are about four feet high. So you have one on this side and one on this side, and that is one two by four, that's eight feet cut in half. And then I took another two by four and I cut for the top part right here, and then whatever was left over, that's what I made the shelf out of. So that's what the frame of the whole setup is. And then I went ahead and I sprayed it black and I just used some spray from um, Home Depot. And I didn't bother spraying the middle one because it's all hidden anyway. And then on one side, I went ahead and drilled a hole so that I could push the um, charging cable through because I don't need the whole charging cable uh, so I wrapped the middle of it up right here and I just used a 
screw to hold it up. I could probably get a better looking hook, but for now, that's what I have. And then once it comes out of there, I have it going down around the whole bottom, coming up, and then on this side, I just created this little groove, this little cutout. And as you can see, I didn't really do that great of a finish because you don't really see it. I could have made another hole just like that one, but it was a lot easier to do this cut than to do that hole. So after I did that one, I realized that, so I just made it like that, and this just sits in there. And then for the actual door, this is a four by two ply board, and it's just three quarter inch thick, and I just grabbed some hinges, one right there, and one right there at the bottom, and then I went ahead and connected to the two by fours. And then I actually connected two by fours with these L brackets, and I'll leave all the stuff that I'm talking about in the description down below so that you can, guys can check it out. But I put two L brackets on that side and two L brackets on this side, um, two L brackets right there, and then just one L bracket at the top because it held. And also these are actually screwed from the other side right here. So this is held by this and then this is held by this. And that's where a stud was in the wall, so I put one bracket in there. And that's really the setup. And then for the way the door closes, I, we have these little magnetized um, door holders. There's one on the top and there's one on the bottom. And then you put these little metal plates right here and another little metal plate right there so that when you go ahead and close it, the metal plate, it ends up grabbing that. And then you got the one down here at the bottom and then you're all set. So I went ahead and wrapped vinyl wrap that I had left over from a desk project that I wrapped about a year ago. And I went ahead and wrapped it and it's not um, glossy or anything. It's just a matte finish. And then I went ahead and bought this Tesla logo on Amazon and I like how big it is and how much it covers it. So I went ahead and put the Tesla logo on it and now it looks really good. It actually looks like a gas station pump and I just bring my car in here backwards, grab that side and then it loops out of from underneath it and then I can plug it in with the car over here and it works. So this setup right here gives me about 30 miles per hour of charging and I plug it in like when I come home from work seven or eight, but I have it scheduled to start charging at midnight and by three o'clock, four o'clock in the morning, just three, four hours of charging, it's really up to the 70% that I limit mine to, which is about 220 miles. And then I recharge it once it gets down to 100 miles. And then you have that six gauge wire going all the way down. So I'm gonna cut real quick, run down to the basement and show you guys exactly where that six gauge wire connects to. So now we're in my basement and this is my breaker and I have all of these and this is the one that I used. Uh, it says office heat because the garage used to be the office when they were selling these houses. So they had a heat there, but they weren't using it. So it was literally the only slot that I had left. And if you can see all the other ones say 15, 15, 20 amps, but this is the only one that says 50 amps. So they sell this whole unit like that. And once you remove the actual panel, um, this screw and this screw and this screw right here at the bottom the, and the whole face comes off then this breaker actually just you grab it and you pop it either this way or, or you pop it that way it's really simple and once you pop it you just put in the new one so I took the two 50s uh, 15s here and I connect and I put a 50 amp one and then the actual wire or the six gauge wire is right here so you have these little holes that you can poke through the panel and then i just poked one through connected it connected the ground and everything and then just ran it up there so this part of my basement is not finished um that part over there is finished where i have the living room and everything but this part is not finished so i was able to just run this along the ceiling and this is the side that my garage is on and then I kept running it uh, across this way 
I had to put this little box in it because something about the codes and the way that if I needed to go this way and wasn't going that way, I had to do that. But anyway, I did what I had to do and then saw a hole right there and I drilled it and I got lucky because there was already a little hole right there where some surround sound speakers that they used in the garage were connected and I had the wires sticking out from the other side. So I was able to see that where you know a good location was. Then I poked the hole and I ran it out and that's just how I connected everything. And then I put my breaker box back together and it was really easy. It took only like an hour to do. Yeah, so that's my setup. I uh, hope you guys liked the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions about the two by four, the sticker, the six gauge wire, the 50 amp, anything basically um, that you guys have a question about, then definitely leave me a question down below in the comment section, right below that like button, and I'll be over there answering questions. Uh, once again, thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Until then, stay plugged.